Salt is one of those things where we can look at groups of people that had low salt consumption as well as high salt consumption. If we look at our indigenous ancestors, tribes of people that subsisted mostly off of wild animal and plant foods, they only consumed 0.05 to 2 grams of salt per day, much less than we consume now. It's safe to say they would have had to obtain salt from either blood or shellfish, possibly even seaweed, but there's no real examples of salt-seeking behavior in diets that contain large amounts of animal flesh. Whereas if we look at herbivores, ruminant animals, we see a lot of salt-seeking behavior in regards to salt licks and certain clays that contain higher amounts of salt that animals try to eat. I mean, Inuit Eskimos, for example, which consume most of their calories from animal foods, over 90%, actually detest salt. I mean, same thing with carnivores in nature. They don't really seek salt. And almost any indigenous group that consumed mostly animal foods didn't seem to need salt because they were obtaining decent amounts of sodium from the meat they were consuming. So when the Neolithic Revolution came, when agriculture started, when humans started incorporating more plants into their diet, we started exhibiting this salt-seeking behavior that we saw in ruminant animals. Uh, the first cases of this were around 8,000 years ago. Various methods from uh, the most popular being they would take these clay pots and fire seemed to be involved with creating these salt cakes. Uh, there were also some structures, particularly in France, made from wood around salt pools used to extract the salt. So with agriculture, with higher plants in the diet, we did start seeking salt and using salt in our food. About a thousand years ago, we used to consume five grams of salt per day. In 19th century England, they used to consume 18 grams of salt. And in 16th century Sweden, 100 grams of salt from cured fish, which seems completely crazy. So very, very drastic differences in salt consumption and it's safe to say humans can tolerate various degrees of that. Uh, to what extent this applies to the carnivore diet, I would say, well, it's not necessary. Uh, I mean, there might be certain modern constituents such as culture, maybe people are used to high salt intakes, but if we look at the sodium potassium pump, uh, which is how the body regulates sodium and potassium, there don't seem to be too many issues with the amount of salt that most people consume, but high levels of sodium can definitely deplete potassium, which in turn can deplete magnesium, and magnesium is very important for things like vitamin D3 absorption. So there's definitely some tie-ins there, but you know, overall health is not something people generally seek out on a carnivore diet. They just want to eat meat and get an easy way out. So I won't go further into that. But the main point I wanted to touch on in this video was the reason people are putting clumps of salt on their food is because their salt is not salty. And here I have a couple of different salts. Here I have a Mediterranean sea salt, uh, just your classic sea salt, fairly uh, fine grained. Here I have a Celtic salt. It's a slightly finer salt. Uh, Celtic salt is made in a different way than the refined salt. It's usually not like the top layer of salt that they harvest. And this Celtic salt is much saltier. Uh, in regards to you could put a smaller amount on your food and it tastes way saltier. This is because of the mineral content of the salt and also because of how it was produced, how fresh it is. It was produced at a raw temperature. This salt, Fleur de Sel de Garand, is the most famous salt in the world. It's a finishing salt, it's large flakes. This salt explodes in your mouth. So, you know, if we're talking about reducing salt consumption, I see people put like practically handfuls of salt on their steak and if you just take a few flakes of this salt, it's way saltier than any table salt you've ever used in your life. So for those of you guys who are saying, oh, I need to eat five to 10 grams of salt 
coming from keto. There's a lot of fasting mindset people that they need to supplement lots of salt. I consume a relatively low amount of salt, just a few grains on my food. And I also water fast for pretty long periods of time without any sort of electrolyte supplementation. And I found that my water intake, I was raw primal for a little while and I didn't salt my food at all. And then I went back to cooked food with a little bit of salt. I didn't really notice a difference in hydration patterns. I did notice a difference in hydration patterns when I consumed very high amounts of salt. Uh, it's like prosciutto, cured meats. So, and that would be to the point where I literally have to drink cups and cups and cups of water to feel hydrated. And this is something that I can kind of relate to low stomach acidity as well. So I don't really want to go too much into that or too further into that. And I also took Accutane, which is an acne drug that impairs your liver function. And I've always been thirsty since I took that. Uh, for, for the most part, I just wanted to give you guys like a brief history on salt, uh, give you guys just a little bit of information out there so you can kind of gauge what you should be doing. Uh, I think this ties into the idea that natural foods are the solution to almost everything. If you're consuming things in a natural way, in a high quality way, then you're gonna consume amounts of them that you should be consuming. Uh, if you guys wanna go on my Amazon shop, uh, this is one of my favorite salts. There's also the, the light gray Celtic salt. I think there's like a fisherman on the label. That's pretty good. Uh, the Fleur de Sel de Grand. There's many uh, versions of these on my Amazon shop as well if you guys want to get this, it's pretty good. Or you could just, you know, get your regular Mediterranean sea salt in bulk. Uh, but I do find that, you know, the amount of salt I've seen some people put on their foods is completely insane. Uh, you, you know, you ever watch like a New York City steakhouse restaurant cooking their steak, they literally throw a handful of salt on the steak. But that's because their salt is not high quality and it doesn't actually taste that salty. Uh, Him Himalayan pink salt, uh, just very clever marketing. If we're going to talk about mineral ratios of salts, all those salts that are very high quality are good. You know, I mean, Himalayan salt has a pretty good mineral profile. I think Celtic salt is a little better. Uh, Redmond's real salt, I think, is similar. But if you're consuming any of those high quality salts, you're fine. It's not like one salt is better than the other. But if we're going to compare that to table salt or refined Mediterranean salt, that's where you can say certain salts are better than other salts. Uh, I did touch briefly on the cured and preserved and how it causes me to be very thirsty, but salt is necessary to make certain foods. You know, there's a lot of dairy products that require salt. Uh, salt is used as a preservative in many ways. So I don't necessarily think salt is bad to consume, especially in the amounts that it is used for the most part. But there are some foods that are very, very salty, and if a food is salty to the point where you don't like it, then it's probably a pretty good indicator that you shouldn't be eating it, at least in large amounts. I think most people, especially on keto, zero-carb carnivore, uh, would benefit from reducing the salt that they are consuming. I think it's really unintentional, as I said, with the type of salt that I'm assuming most people are using. If we're gonna touch on ratios in meat. Meat has 1400 milligrams of potassium per pound, 250 milligrams of sodium, which is the equivalent 500 milligrams of salt. And the magnesium and the other minerals aren't too important in, in this video, but consuming two to three pounds of meat a day, you know, it gets you a decent amount of salt and sodium in the diet. So definitely not a concern with not salting your food and I find that it's also a good way to reduce palatability and lose weight, but uh, there's, there's many other ways to do that too, from cooking your food lighter to a order of satiation, which I'll go over in about a, maybe a week or two from now. Uh, but I think I've covered everything I've wanted to in this video. As I said, if you guys would like to purchase some high quality salts, if you wanna help me out, you can, I mean, you don't have to. I don't really make a lot of money from Amazon, but. Like if you guys are going to go and buy salts, you might as well buy them from my Amazon shop, right? If you guys would like to support me, please uh, check out my Patreon page. There's an interesting story about me. I'm going to do probably an update in a little while on that. 
Uh, if you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to diet, what I do is you pretty much send me your entire day and your diet and I optimize everything. And you, you'd be surprised at how many people think they're drinking a good water source and they're not. You'd be surprised how many people think various aspects of their diet and lifestyle are correct. But uh, shoot me an email if you guys are interested. All that information is below in the description. Uh, for those of you guys asking, Frank, why do you have bags under your eyes in some videos? Part of it is the lighting, but guys, I work as a bartender. I, I get like sometimes, it's 5 a.m. right now, and I'm filming this video so I can get it out to you guys in time. So my sleep is definitely not the best. But um, I've had eye bags since I was a kid. Uh, I think I'm going to do a whole video on under eye bags. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you want to hear more about that now, I did a live stream maybe a month or two ago on it. But I'll do a separate video addressing it entirely.